All right, good morning, everybody. It's uh, 9.30 and we have uh, enough people to start this meeting, so I'll call the meeting of the Human Services Committee to order. Karen, please call the roll. Chair Swarzy. Here. Member Childress. Member Garcia. Here. Member Desart. Here. Member Galassi. Here. Member LaPlante. Hey. Do we have any public comment? No public comment. Thank you. I have no remarks this morning. Uh, do any members would any like to make any comment? Okay, seeing none, the fun part of this meeting is the opportunity to recognize some of our long-term employees <coughs> in the community services department. So we will start with a 10-year recognition award for Regina Scarpe. So Mary Keating will Absolutely. share some information and and with perfect timing, uh, Regina's coworkers are all oh. in the door right now. Tanya will have you turn up as well. And Natasha. <laughs> so Regina is in our Adult Protective Services Unit, which, as you know, is uh, the unit that does some of the most difficult work in the entire department, and I would argue in the entire county. And so um, I'm going to let Shatanya say a few words about Regina, and then I don't know if Natasha wants to say anything more. All right. Well, um, Regina, who we all call Gina, um, is uh, an amazing uh, staff. She has great ideas in addition to taking care of our vulnerable adults in DuPage County. She really does also think about her colleagues and also is always thinking about ways we can do outreach. She's been a leader in our outreach community, putting out uh, presentations, creating new ways of how we can reach out. Also, she is really um, the brains behind our latest uh, World Elder Abuse Awareness Day event that we just did. So we are very happy to have Gina on our team. She is the person that you want behind you if you need a strong advocate. Yeah, I just wanna thank Gina for your 10 years here. Um, we are super excited to have you. And you've just been a wonderful asset to the APS program. I know Gina started on CCP. Um, and then when she joined APS, she came back to us full time about a year, a year yeah. almost a year ago. So we were really excited that when she came back full time and has now uh, been carrying a full caseload and just does a really wonderful job working with our clients. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, on the spot. I'll take it. <laughs> no, um, I really, I really enjoy the work that I do. I feel like I'm called for it, so it makes it easier. I have a great team. I'm not just saying that in front of all you. I really do. You because know, you're here, but also behind your back. You guys are great uh, co-workers. I feel very supported and validated by management um, and the leadership here, so it's just, I really, this is my work home, and um Looking forward to another 10 years. Thank you. Thank you. So, so uh, before we were going to do a picture in just a second, but uh, any members, members like to make any comments? I just want to thank you so much for your hard work. That is a very tough job that you have, and know that we totally appreciate uh, you for all the hard work you do. Thank, thank you. Thank you for caring for our seniors. That's so important. Thank you. Very important. Well, and, and look, community services staff, you guys don't get the credit you deserve. I mean, you guys, you guys probably save lives every day and you don't, and, and most of the time you probably don't even know it. So uh, it, it's, it's so rewarding as county board members to see the staff here for extended periods of time. It means that, um, you know, you got uh, good bosses that are doing a good job taking care of you and, uh, and we are very, very great. So thank you. And uh, let's do, we'll do a picture with this Gina and then we'll do a picture with the other Gina. <laughs> so uh, I'll have the board members come up and oh, Joan, you walked in just in time. So uh, and any any other staff that would like to get in, I'll let you stay next. Well, thank you. Any other staff no, 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 no. okay. You guys are part of the team. You guys are part of the team. You can get in. Uh, hold on, Don is uh, oh, yeah, working time. Right up here. Could be a while. Who's right. going in? In or out? Let's go. You're welcome to come in. You guys are talking to you. 
Everybody come in. Yeah. Yeah. Always, yes. Yes. <laughs> Picture? There will be shortly. Okay. Yes. I'm just told. Good job spotting. <laughs> so, we also have another length of service award. Who remembers what they were doing back in 1994? Because I sure well, don't. Gina Strafford Ahmed, 30 years of community services. So, Mary. Right. Well, happy Gina Day to those who celebrate. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Gina's one of the few people who's been here longer than me. Um, I think there's only about four or five others in the department um, who have more than 25 years of service. And so, um, Gina is like the sort of operations queen. Anything that I give Gina um, gets done and it gets done quickly. She has her hands in so many different things in the department. She runs information and referral, which now includes the 211 system. She's running LIHEAP and weatherization. Um, she's heavily involved in all of our emergency management planning. She runs the community services block grant advisory committee. Um, she uh, puts together the annual report um, for the department. She compiles all the data for that uh, and then works with our printer and our, our creative folks over at the health department. She really she really is somebody that I can absolutely rely on. Anything I give her, she does. She turns it around quickly and um, I really depend on her um, quite a bit for so many things in the department. So thank you, Gina, for everything you've done the last 30 years and uh, that you'll continue to do, I know. Hopefully not for more throwing their <laughs> 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 Thank you, Gina. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. It doesn't feel like 30 years, but um, but it's been a lot longer than that, <laughs> which is funny. Um, in 1991, I uh, came under Margot Schreiber. I don't know if any of you remember Margot back in the day. Jan, you'll remember Margot. Um, and uh, I was an intern, and I did LIHEAP, and I did home delivered meals assessments back in the day and I was here for a couple of years and I was at a township and then I came back and I was in senior services for about five years and then was doing uh, management and INR and now um, I'm over all these programs and it's been a whirlwind. It doesn't feel like 30 years and I think that's a, a testament to working in a job that is different every day. And I appreciate um, the opportunities I've had here. I appreciate the leadership that I've worked under and the leadership of the board. And I thank you very much for the opportunities we've had. And um, somebody else in this room um, who has been here 35, <laughs> and not to name anyone. But, um, you know, I have some really good teammates who are very supportive. Joan and Natasha and my staff is awesome, awesome staff. So, um, <laughs> you know, thank you all. Thank you. Gina, you were one of the people I've interacted the most with since I've been on this board, and it's always been a delight and always been fantastic. And I want to say this, I'm not being nice, but when I saw this on the agenda and it was 30 years, I'm like, She's only 40. What the heck? <laughs> oh, you're so nice. Oh, I'm not saying that to be nice. I just said no, 30 years. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. Gina, you know, I just want to say that, you know, we've had the opportunity also to work a lot, you know, with the CSBG Advisory Board. And um, your work is meticulous. Your work is fantastic. You're caring for people. It shows every day. And I just, have, I'm so happy that you are here and you are a fantastic asset to the county. So thank you. 
Yes, please. And just to echo what everyone said, it's just been wonderful seeing you here at all the human services meeting. I can tell that you add value. And I, I've said this before, but you must just really manage such a tremendous staff because the, the, the frequency that we have these celebrations is just obviously due to, to the teamwork and collaboration that, that you really develop within your department. So thank you for that. And thank you for 30 amazing years. I, I really appreciate it. And I'll say it again. I mean, you've saved lives in 30 years of the lives you probably saved and helped. I mean, you can't even count. And I, and I hope all of community services gives that some thought from time to time. And, and you know, a job is a job, but, but the things you guys are doing and, and in the, your years of service, you have probably made so much difference in so many people's lives, not just the people that reach out to community services, but their families and their friends. And, and that's so got to be so gratifying. And we are so grateful. So thank you. Thank you. Do a quick photo. <laughs> Oh, sure. Sure. You're probably not now. Fire. Yeah. You're probably aren't old enough. No, you're, I, you're I, probably was, I, I was on the department for about a year. You guys, you guys want to? Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I was going to ask if you remember who was on the Human Services Committee 30 years ago. <laughs> Bob Schroeder. Yeah, Bob Schroeder, definitely. Probably <laughs> Gwen Henry. Oh, oh was she? Oh, 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 was, was Linda Crusoe? That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good memory. Oh. All right. Thank you again. <laughs> Uh, on to the uh, agenda items. I'll take a motion to approve item 242259, the Human Services Committee regular meeting minutes from Tuesday, August 6, 2024. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Take a motion to approve FIR 14224, acceptance and appropriation of the HUD 2023 continuum of care planning grants for program year 25. In the amount of three hundred twelve thousand nine hundred thirty-two dollars. So second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you. Take a motion to approve FIR one forty-three twenty-four acceptance and appropriation of the HUD twenty twenty-three continuum of care homeless management information system coordinated entity grant for program year twenty-five in the amount of eighty thousand dollars. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you. Take a motion for FIR 144-24, acceptance and appropriation of the HUD 2023 Continuum of Care Homeless Management Inter so Information moved. System Grant, program year 25 okay. in the amount of $188,556. We had a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. I'll take a motion for FIR 145-24, acceptance and appropriation of additional funding for the ILD CEO Community Services Block Grant for program year 24. And it is going from $1,196,614 to $1,274,833, an increase of $78,290. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Take a motion for 242260, a recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order issued to Direct Supply Inc. for Jordan's replacement bed parts for the DuPage Care Center for the period September 5th, 24 to September 4th of 25 for a total contract not to exceed $15,000. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Member Garcia? Aye. Member Dessart? Aye. Member Galassi? Aye. Chair Swartz? Aye. Thank you. I'll take a motion for 242261. So Community Services Manager to attend the National Adult Protective Services Conference Second. in Albuquerque, New Mexico from September 5th, 15th, 2024 through September 19th, 2024. Expenses to include registration, travel, lodging, and per diems for approximately a total of $2,540. We had a motion to second. Any discussion? Yes. Um, what's the threshold? I thought we. <laughs> 
What's the material? E twenty five hundred. Oh, so it just exceeded that. I see. Yeah. Okay. Once it's over twenty five, it has to come. Apparently. I remembered it being three thousand. So that was my question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good question. Uh, roll call, please. Member Desart. Aye. Member Galassi. Aye. Member Childress. Member Garcia. Aye. And Chair Swarzy. Aye. Thank you. Make a motion for twenty four twenty two sixty two oh. community oh. services case Second. manager to attend the National Adult Protective Services Conference in Albuquerque, New Mexico from September 15, 24 through September 19, 24 expenses to include registration, travel, lodging, and per diems for the approximate total of $2,681. Motion to second, any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Member Desart? Aye. Member Galassi? Aye. LaPlante? Childress? Member Garcia? Aye. Chair Swarzy? Aye. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, we have no residency waivers, but I so I will turn this over to Mary B for community services update. I just one uh, quick thing. Um, I want to congratulate uh, Lisa Snipes, our homeless continuum of care um, planner, as well as John Fox, who oversees um, Lisa's work. Uh, we received uh, an award of excellence from the National Association for County Community and Economic Development this week um, in the category of homeless assist assistance coordination. Um, Lisa, uh, over the past year, has done an amazing job putting together a lived experience advisory committee. Um, the uh, One of the things that HUD really wants um, uh, communities to ensure is that individuals with lived experience of homelessness are sort of involved in the planning process, that their perspective is is um, taken into account when we're, we're working on um, uh, ways to do outreach, ways to provide services. And so... Um, Lisa got really creative with putting together this advisory committee. In addition to putting out a call through all the agencies that we uh, that we work with, she put up flyers in laundromats, in train stations, uh, post offices, um, uh, coffee shops if they if they allowed it. So she really sort of got out into the community. We now have five individuals uh, who who serve as our lived experience um, advisory committee. Uh, Lisa took uh, two or three of them down to. Um, the Illinois an Illinois conference on homelessness. It was a really valuable experience for everybody. So um, I'm uh, really proud of the work that that Lisa does, and uh, so I uh, just wanted to let you know that we that's been recognized nationally. So, great thank job. You, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions for Mary? Okay. On to our new Page Care Center update, Janelle. Good morning. Good morning. My PowerPoint will be on. And may I sit here? Is that okay? Yeah, please sit here. My PowerPoint will be up on the screen. I provided two other pieces of, of paper paperwork for you. One is a snapshot for the budget, and the other is a reminder of how the care center is funded. Right? We've had some changes over the last couple of years, and it continuously becomes more and more complex on how we're reimbursed. Um, I won't even get into that because it's very deep. So. I'm going to go ahead and present our request for the 25 budget for the care center. So you um, all recall from previous discussions that we really strive for a break even budget. And so we were able to achieve that yet again. So you can see our top revenue, um, patient care, non patient care would be like revenue from the cafes, um, revenue from cleaning other areas in the county. Um, and then you see that we are going to apply the Kenneth Moy Fund this year. So that money that's been sitting there for many, many years is actually going to be applied to the construction project in 2025. Um, and then we are utilizing a small portion of our fund balance that we have. So there's our revenues. Um, we'll talk a lot more in detail about those and expenses as we go through the pages here. But then you can see our expense budget, what are our personnel, commodities, contractual, and capital. So the next slide just tells you that I have that detail for you. Um, next slide. Who's driving for me? Thank you. All right. So our revenues continue to be impacted by uh, in 2024 by the ongoing ability to accept admissions during COVID. So there are times when we have enough people down on our COVID area, we still bring them out of their units and bring them down. We are very conservative in how we approach COVID. And Deb Birdsall, she's a PhD. She's with uh, um, an Institute of Medicine and a grant funded with IDPH. We work with her a lot. And she really recognizes the care center and, our, and how we approach that um, for COVID. 
So in 2025, we are uh, projecting an increase in our ability to accept. However, now we are down two units for construction, which is about 72 beds. Um, in 24, our occupancy was 88% based on uh, 294 beds. That does, those include the construction beds when I say 294. Um, in 2025, the budgeted occupancy is set at again around 88%. Um, this would be a stretch goal. We're assuming no additional restricted admissions and ongoing hiring to care for residents. So we, our hiring has improved greatly with our changing and um, contracted uh, wage adjustments. Um, we still struggle a little bit on CNAs, but we're still using a consistent uh, staffing with our agencies for the most part. The rates by payer are varied and we'll go through those. Um, we anticipate higher rates for Medicaid and private pay and stable rates for insurance and Medicare, and I will provide um, more details. This budget does not include the previous uh, year's $2 million subsidy that the county provided the care center. Okay. Next slide. So you can see our percentages by payer mix, and we like to keep our public aid high um, at least over 70% because that improves our Medicaid rate reimbursement but um, also as we are the safety net for the county. The little shift there you see in the 9% is because we're seeing more people that are in a uh, spend down, meaning they're private pay, but they have very limited assets. And then we provide them a place to come and we convert them, they're guaranteed to bed when their funds run out. Um, insurance again, 2% and 5% Medicare kind of in line. Next slide. So you look at our per diems and how things have changed. So in 2022, you can see our Medicaid rate was $213. And now there's been a lot of changes in how we're paid. We're paid um, based on um, the actual resident themselves, their acuity, their needs. Uh, so it's a, a <coughs> that portion is different and, and been a long time coming. There's other components to it. There are many components, which I provided to you that really drive that rate. And everything is dependent. So it's based on our staffing. And we get an incentive. It's based on that case mix. It's a patient-driven payment model now. So it's based on the acuity of our patients. We also get a quality um, incentive if our quality rating is a five-star, and um, which it is. So any of those things are pretty variable. So I think I've said this before. We've gotten really high in all of our met metrics. It's one thing to get there. It's a lot harder to stay. So... Mm -hmm. We're really um, fighting to do that. And so that's why you'll see that uh, Medicaid per diem um, be. And that's a, a blend of the managed care Medicaid and the traditional Medicaid that's kind of being phased out. So um, the managed care Medicaid is actually a little higher than that. But when we average the two out, that's where we land. Private pay, again, we do, we're do. we doing a 4% increase. That's based on market analysis. Again, if people are private pay, and we have very few, and their assets are limited or they run out, they are guaranteed a bet. So it's not like we're going to move anybody out. Um, insurance pre premiums, they're pretty up and down as, as with all the managed care um, that's driving reimbursement. And the Medicare per diem, we did not include a percent increase when we did the budget because we weren't sure. And so they came out with a new way to reimburse us um, for this. So, so there's a, probably about a 4% increase that we're going to see in the Medicaid rate, which would take us to 684 then there's a 2% that CMS is gonna withhold. And that 2% is based on what's called a SNF VBP, value-based purchasing. So it's another whole metric of performance. They're gonna withhold 2% and then give it back if you do okay. And so it's very, very complex. And we finally get to this number the last two times uh, quarters, it's been 1.01 something, something that's like 10 digits long. And so because we're over one, we're doing well. So that we could see an additional 2% on top of that for our Medicaid, Medicare. Mm -hmm. Any questions? I know that's really complex. Yes. Actually, yeah, go back to that last slide. So look, I understand, I think I understand the, you know, the public aid, private pay. But, so how does the insurance and Medicare come in for the residents if they're either on Medicaid or private pay? Well, they still have a Medicare A. Most of the people in the community have Medicare Part A. Um, so that helps pay for that's their short stay benefit. So okay. those are people coming in for therapy, post-surgical. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's okay. what the insurance and Medicare represent. For the, the short-termers. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep. Yes. And you mentioned an acronym, C something, C3. CMI. CMI. What it's case that? mix index. Okay. So now we can 
in our, thank God, we have a new computer electronic medical record called Point Click Care. So we can generate a report. So if for every resident, it looks at that person on all of the data we submit for them, and it looks at their psychosocial needs, their physical needs, all of their needs. Are they a two-person assist? Are they incontinent? And it provides a number that says this person's case mix index is this. It's based on acuity. So everyone's variable and everyone moves. And so we look at that because when you place residents in long-term care, like here's our residents for one north, here's our residents for two north, over time, people change. And if you look at that, you have to look at that to, to look at your staffing. And if all of a sudden you have a higher case mix <laughs> index, but you're not increasing the staffing, well, there's just tools that we can really utilize to make sure we're, we're positioning the residents appropriately and the staff to care. And for I them. appreciate that because every department has their own acronyms. And there's a ton. I'm so sorry. Yep. No, I appreciate so that. You. Yep. Yep. So we can move on to the expense points. So overall, there's an increase in 0.49 as compared to the 24 budget. Personnel um, is up by 8.12%, but that's primarily due to the ask me wage adjustments that we did in 24. Um, we did put in a, a placeholder for a 2% COLA and an 8% increase in employee health insurance. Um, commodities overall decrease, that's drug uh, med, and that's predominantly based on census, um, especially for drugs. Uh, contractual expenses overall decreased. This is primarily due to the uh, contingency fund decrease. Last year, when we were still working on the ask me rates and what we were going to do, we put money into the contingency as a placeholder. And now those are put under regular wages over time and they're put in the appropriate place. So that's why the contingency fund is now down compared to last year. So the capital all allocation re reflects a 2.4% increase. The Kenneth Moy funds are now in there. That's part of that reason for that increase. So there's, they're in as an expense, but they're also in as a revenue. So they offset each other. Is that the loss of the funds? The Kenneth Moy the fund. Kenneth Moy yes, fund. that's it. That was a total amount. Yep. Yep. So that's it. That's kind of a snapshot. Great. Questions, comments? Quick question. Yep. Um, so with the ability to raise, and I don't I, I want to make sure I phrase this correctly, so I may be phrasing it wrong, but with the, with the ability to uh, raise the fees for the residents based on, you know, all the wonderful things that we do. Right. Uh, yep. And so, so... So obviously it, it, the revenue, there's more revenue coming in because of that. Mm -hmm. So when did that kick in? Did that kick in in 2023 that you were able There's to been many different things. So like the Medicaid uh, rate reform came in in 2022, I think it was, and that was very impactful, especially for county entities. We, um, Leading Age is our state uh, nonprofit association. And they did a lot uh, working directly with um, HFS at the Springfield level and really fought for uh, uh, county facilities um, because we do care for the indigent, the most vulnerable at high percentages. Yep. Yes. So you, I know you, you spoke on this, but the increase of regular salaries is, is the largest. That's because of the... Um, the salary increases that we approve. Yep, they got shipped yep. into their regular okay. wages and all the different wage categories. That yep. makes sense. And then I apologize if I missed this, but what is the um, the other professional services was it looks to be considerably down from what was budgeted? Could you just for, for this year? This is where I'm going to refer to Inva and see if she can help me go. I don't remember what goes into that. Because there's a lot of things that get lumped. We so have for so many budget line items. We budgeted 2.2 million, and it's yes. projected to be 1.5. I'm just wondering, like we've talked about this in the in the larger board meeting of when the actuals are considerably less. I just am curious what under other professional services we were last year. It was 2.2, and now we're doing 1.4. So I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think maybe it has to do something with. Because we had we used to have all the low expenses for doing with asking maybe before. Yeah, that wasn't budget. that much though. I'll have to get back to you on okay. when, when we break that down. There are so many different categories that get lumped yeah. in. I there. mean, it's a good problem to have. I'm glad it's lower, yeah. but I'm just yeah. curious because then yeah. this year's budget is back up 
to 1.9. So we're budgeting, you know, $300,000 more than we did this year. So I'm just curious. Um, that, well, that's anticipated. So we'll have to go back and look at what's in there. I forget if that's, um, our drugs in there? I can't remember. I'm, I apologize, I don't have that answer. Okay, but we'll get it for you. Thank you. Any other questions? As you digest it, if you have more, feel free to shoot me an email and we'll respond to the group. Yes, you know, yes. If, if I could, so I just want to kind of let the, uh, the committee know that Janelle, Tim and I have been talking. We've been working through, you know, she is obviously a big capital project going on right now. And we are looking at opportunities to finish the rest of the building over there. Um, there is, so we're, we're figuring that out that, and we will be presenting probably one-on-one -on -one with uh, board members as we move forward, but we're still working on it. I just wanted everybody to know it is, the, the nice thing is we have the team together, we have the approach together, the funds are, are potentially available within the uh, within the account, but we are looking at that possibility. Obviously, Janelle is a lot more to, to look at, but it would be, it'd be nice to get the rest of the building lined out as since we have everything lined out. I don't know, Janelle, if you wanted to add anything else. No, that's, that. that's good. Is I mean, the haunted no, 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 it's not, it's no, not, it's the, not. Uh, no. Not that one, but there are no. portions, if everybody remembers, there are portions with, with this project we're doing right now. I mean, it's a $31 million ARPA project that had to be downsized a little bit to account for, obviously, we we're going through the increased construction costs, everything. So it had to be downsized to fit that. And we have an opportunity to finish the rest of the facility and make all the rooms. Well, you don't mean the rest of the facility. Well, except for except for the south wing, gotcha. except for the south occupied wing space. Yeah, occupied space. So, but gotcha. what we want to try to do is touch every resident's room, every resident's living area, the the nursing stations, and I think we we might be able to present an option that will do that. And we're we're hopefully within the next probably two to three months coming before. And I think it, it makes sense to to maybe meet individually so we can have a real back and forth discussion like we've done for other big projects. Have we ever done a cost analysis of how much it would cost to have that south wing yeah, done? We, yeah, it, it's it's actually a little bit south. A couple of years ago, it was a little bit south of 20 million. 20 million, okay. Because I mean, that would be great revenue if it were done. I don't, well. I mean, it used to, when the capacity was over 500. And the reason why they were unoccupied is they were just sitting empty. Okay. You just couldn't, there wasn't the need. Gotcha. So if and then we're, we'd have to get more staff, sure. We'd have to get more staff, of course. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, They one one goes with the other. So yeah, so once we're done with the construction project, if we're fine, we're sitting there with a waiting list, then, you know, then I'll come and ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, but, there are grants available too for the yeah, state of Illinois, yeah, for yeah, the government, yeah, whatever. Yeah. They have been pursuing a lot of different options for that space. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions for Janelle? Thank you. Thank you very All much. All right. Janelle, thank you. It. Public health just walked in for our annual survey. Oh, so it's going to be a fun week. Good luck. Thank, thank you. Good luck. <laughs> Do any of our members have any old business? No. I have some old business. Okay. Uh, so as you know, last year's budget we included another year for our small human services grant uh, i have an email out of it i haven't I got a response yet but we uh we need to speak i need to speak and, and vice chair garcia needs to speak with our finance chair and vice chair along with our finance department on figuring out what changes need to come to the application process so i don't know if uh I'm going to ask Jeff to, to respond. So Jeff, uh, I sent an email out last week about um, getting together to talk about any changes that our finance department needs uh, with regards to the small human service grant uh, application process. So let's get that set up and, and, and that way we can start moving forward with this. Yeah, I'll forward that to Mary Catherine and then we'll start working through it. Okay, sounds good. Thank sure. you. Yes? What Can you remind me what the timing will be when that will... Well, there, there's no timing right now. We want to get this ironed out. And then yeah. what we, we so, gave was like six weeks last time. Yeah. So obviously, you know, we went through the, the process, the portal last time. And then you have once the portal opens, then the, the members figure out, 
you know, which ones. I will say, you know, timing wise, our staff is a little bit crunched because right now is a really, really critical time for ARPA because ARPA is coming to an end for all viable projects at the end of 24. So the team, and we had a meeting yesterday, the team is really stressed to the max right now. So there might be a little bit, we, we've got to factor that in because it's the same team sure. doing both. Okay. So we absolutely, the money is reserved for the, the small nonprofits. It's absolutely reserved. It might, we might need to push a little bit here to, to figure out how to do it, but the money is, is there dedicated. It's not going anywhere. So did we do it in September last year? I believe okay. it was announced originally in the spring. It, oh man, that's right. It, it, but it didn't come out till the we, fall. Well, fall. We, right, we we had the reception yeah. member Schwartz, yeah. I think, in the fall. And, yeah. and, and keep in mind, we did just, and the, we wanted to separate a little bit because we just had a very big reception for the nonprofits right. that for that. Right. Right. There's another reception right. coming up for another round for that same thing in October. So we'd like to spread. We'd out. like to spread it out a little sure. bit if we could. So. Those two are, are uh, how much is, do we know how much the second round is, Joan? Oh, that's very good. Transformational grant? Yeah, how much? About 3.5 million. 3.5, million. so there's a lot of money there. So, it, you know, it's a matter of obviously bandwidth with our own staff. I know Mary Keating and her staff and then finance have to do it. But our focus right now is are the two big grants. And, and we don't have to be in a rush for it, but we want to make sure that that money is there. It, the, the money's one more. It's ARPA interest. So the money is there and we've got several years saved. Okay. So it, it's good. earmarked for it. So we've got several years. It's That's not a concern. So I know um, this is on the responsibility of the district representatives, but I'm just curious if there's any increase in like marketing because like just I know that like you guys had a shortage, but like there were districts that didn't we you haven't know, had that discussion yet, but we we and okay. you're absolutely right. So one once once we work with staff to figure out the application process and then we open it up, I'll work with staff, we'll all work together to see what and and, and it, there'll be some responsibility on us yes. as well. Yeah. But we have you're right, we have to get more than three applications in District Three. Yeah, yeah. You know. You know, I totally understand what Nick is saying about. Um, we don't, we want to spread out these, these, you know, these grants that we're giving. And you said there's no rush, but there really is a rush because I know, for example, which well, is one example, in District 5, we've got CAWA, the Chinese American Women of Action, and they used their small grant for 2024 programming for the kids. And so I know that they're going to want their grant to schedule 2025 programming. So if we don't kind of, I don't mean rush it, but if we don't kind of hit the same dates that we did last year, then organizations like Kawa, again, just one example out of many, um, aren't going to be able to um, schedule their programming for the kids for the next year. Send me an email, Jeff and, and Nick, on when you think finance staff would be able to start looking I'll, I'll at I'll tell them. you what, why don't we set up a meeting with you? I'd come in, let's meet with the staff. Okay. You know, Mary's staff, finance staff, and let's sit down and we can kind of go through time. At table least get a calendar. calendar. Okay. And I, I will say to, to your point, member to start, the, the grants were for bigger not for profits too that, that we just did. Some of these small right. ones probably aren't part of that mix. So they're they're it's a different universe somewhat. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other old business? Any new business? Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you guys very much.